This morning with my mind, it was dead on Jesus. Oh, I woke up this morning with my mind.
running, skipping, running. Do you have a joy on the inside? Skipping. Do you have a joy running. on the inside? Skipping. Do you feel a joy on the running. inside? Woo. Do you skipping. feel a joy bubbling up on the inside? Can we worship God this morning? He's a good God. Do you feel like running? Your soul magnify Him. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Running, running, skipping. watching Sunday morning live. Come on. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. And we got a lively bunch here this morning. Praise the Lord. God is so good. He is so good all of the time. Hallelujah. We just we just came out of our Caribbean conference for 2015 and we're just enjoying Jesus because the conference had an, an impact on our lives. Isn't that right? Did God touch anybody? Did God talk to anybody? Hallelujah. Did he bless anybody? Glory to God. Amen. And we are rejoicing because our God has met us right where we were. Bless the Lord. Glory to God. That's the beautiful thing about God. God will come down and see about his people. You know, if you don't know how to get a word to God or you think you don't know how to pray or whatever, just praise him. Just praise him. Praise him out of a true heart, and God will come see about you. I'm a witness because I've gone through some things in my early, early salvation years. I didn't even know how to pray. I, I didn't know what to say to God. And then especially when you've messed up. Anybody messed up? Amen. Rest, messed up royally. And you're almost embarrassed to pray. Hello. Come on. Come on. I've messed up to the point where I, I don't know what to say to God. Amen. Anybody feel felt like that? Yeah. Glory to God. I didn't know what to say to God, how to say it. Done said it before. And it turned out to be a lie. Amen. Come on. Come on now. I know I'm not by myself in this. Glory to God. Amen. And you get you're too embarrassed to even go back to him. You, you go to him in shame. Praise the Lord. But God say, Glory to God. I'm a loving father. And you know, when you don't know how to approach him, start praising him. Just praise him. Just get a praise in your heart. Hallelujah. If you just praise him, he said, I inhabit the praises of my people. He'll come down and see about you. Glory to God. I, I am a witness. Glory to God. God has come down and to see about me in some of the darkest times of my life. And had he not come, I might not have even been here today. But he came to see about his child. I just, all I could do was praise him. I just started to praise him. Tell him how good he is. You know, God loved praises. He loved when his people praise him from a pure heart. You know, when you can say to God, God, I have messed up. I don't even know how to come to you. Glory to God. I am a mess. Glory to God. I don't even like myself. Hello. Glory to God. When, when we get real with God, God will come and see about you, saints. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. We want to welcome our television audience today. Glory to God. And we're going to be, we're going to be uh, repeating, airing, repeat airing of the Caribbean conference. This was an awesome conference this year. Glory to God. God gave us fresh manna from on high. Fresh revelation. Glory to God. Understanding. 
so that we can actually walk in what he's what is the intent of scripture we can walk in it god god has to give revelation saints he has to unveil his truth and he has to give understanding of the truth he has to give understanding of the truth glory to god i'm going to be ministering today i'm going to be ministering today from that study guide from uh, the Caribbean Conference. So if you have your study guides, you can take them out. And if you don't have them, see Pastor Colleen, amen, and Colleen, and she will give you one or get you one or when she see what's in your hand. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If, if you have, if you put something in your hand, glory to God, and just wave it a little bit, they'll bring you a study guide. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. We, these, these study guides help us to finance the ministry. They help us to finance the ministry. Amen. They take care of some of our expenses. Glory to God. They take, to help take care of the expenses of the conference and, and whatnot. Glory to God. And the bulk of, the, I want to say that the bulk of the expenses for the conference, glory to God, did not fall on the halfway tree ministry. Amen. Here, the bulk of the expenses did not fall. Amen. This year. Thank God. Amen. We were able to help. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Bless the Lord. Yes, ma'am. You know. <laughs> Colleen. <laughs> we have, uh, uh, Colleen wants me to tell you that we have some paraphernalia left over from the conference. We have conference fans. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I. I, I am the marketing person this morning. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. And uh, if so, if you, if the air condition is not enough for you, glory to God, that you need a fan because you've been running and skipping. Praise you, Jesus. Then see, see, the, see these uh, these staff members that are walking around here. Glory to God. And you know they they'll be glad to hand you one, but I think they want you to hand them something too. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. I want us to prepare our hearts this morning because we're going to talk about a subject that is very dear to, to the heart of God. Amen. And it um, depicts, I think it's the one thing that, um, the one single thing that identifies whether we're in the faith, whether we're walking in the faith. The Lord said to us that the Ten Commandments can be summed up in two commandments, loving the Lord with all of our heart and our might and our strength and our soul, amen, and loving one another as ourselves. Isn't that right? Amen. To love, to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, to love our enemy as we love ourselves. Hallelujah. To love our enemy. One of the things that I learned when I first came into holiness that has really stayed with me all these years and I think has helped to preserve me, and that is never to be anyone's enemy. If they choose to be your enemy, that's their prerogative. But don't you choose to be anyone else's enemy. You're always the neighbor. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> if you want to go further in God, you want to go further in God, always be the neighbor. Don't, don't become anyone else's enemy. Bless the Lord. Do good to those who despitefully use you and abuse you. Now, these principles are gendered from our nature, and our nature is love. The nature of the sons is love. Hello? I said the nature of the sons is love. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Bless you, Father. I want to go into chapter 2. And the, the title of the chapter is Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Uh, 
faithfulness. The the Lord is very clear on this point. And I should have named this chapter Faithfulness to the Word of God. Faithfulness to the Word of God, because that's what this chapter is about, being faithful to the Word of God. And it identifies the love of the saints. Faithfulness identifies the love of the saints. Faithfulness to God's word can readily identify our love for one another. It can readily identify our love for one another. Bless you, Father. Our foundational scripture is taken from Colossians, the first chapter. And I told you God told me to do an exposition of the New Testament. And I started with the book of Colossians because I thought it was, you know, it was a small book, easy to do. Praise the Lord. <laughs> really. Amen. But I didn't realize that the Lord was sending me to Colossians. Amen. Because it's the hub. And you can go into that book and, and if you really study it properly, it touches on every aspect, every aspect of our salvation. Amen? Every aspect. Glory to God. So I want everyone very attentive today, and I am praying, Father, I, I, bring, I bring our hearts up before you this morning. And I am praying, Father, that you look among us, you find sin, forgive it, Lord. That heart that reaches out to you right now that desires forgiveness, Lord, and mercy. I ask that you respond, Father, with your mercy. Because it endures forever. You're never without mercy, Father. And I ask you to forgive sin and wash away iniquities, Father, in the name of Jesus. That our joy may be full. That we may indeed have fellowship with you this morning. We want you to speak to us. We want you to talk to us. We want to be able to embrace your word, Father. You said, come, let us reason together. This is a time of reasoning. This is a time when we have brought our hearts before you. And we say, Father, fill us. Fill us with your spirit, God. Fill us with your way. Fill us with your desires. Fill us with your will this morning. Father, we love you with everything that's in us, Lord. And those hearts that are true, those hearts that are actually reaching out to you, Lord, we ask you, we ask you to touch, touch in a mighty way. Render yourself unto us, God. Give us understanding. Prick our hearts where they need to be pricked. Fill us up where we need to be filled. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Let the redeemed say, Amen. Amen. Colossians 1 and 2 says, To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossians, Grace be to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I, I marvel at some of these salutations that the apostles write, glory to God, to, to one another. They are so matter of fact, you know. They, they don't wrestle with some of the things that we wrestle with. Amen. They are so matter of fact. When you, when you, when you look at this salutation, he says, uh, grace unto you and peace from God, the fa our Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, they realized, Paul realized that Jesus and the Father are living in him. Hello? So when he's writing to the church, he's writing on their behalf. He's, he's, he's greeting the church at Colossians. Uh, he's greeting them. But he's also allowing the Father and the Son to greet them. 
as well. Are, are you hearing? Glory to God. So there was a, a strict uh, fellowship. There was a strict fellowship. I remember John saying, our fellowship is with the Father and the Son. Is that right? Amen. Because in us dwell the fullness of the Godhead bodily. <clears throat> with the Holy Ghost came the Father and the Son. Is that right? Amen. The Father and the Son. Glory to God. So he is greeting them in the spirit of oneness. He is greeting them in that spirit of oneness. But I want to focus on the first phrase here. Uh, to the saints, holy ones. The holy ones. Amen. And faithful brethren. Faithful brethren. That's what we want to talk about. Those who remain steadfast steadfastly loyal to the truth. That's what a faithful brethren is. That's what faithful brethren are, rather. They are those who remain steadfastly loyal to the truth. Faithfulness is constant, unshakable loyalty to God's word. Constant, unshakable loyalty to God's word. And those who are faithful are the ones who are counted worthy to carry the gospel and to lead the people of God. If you are faithful, then you are counted worthy to carry this gospel and to lead God's people. Are you working with me? Are you working with me? <clears throat> this faithfulness or loyalty factor is the commandment that will not be ignored in the day of judgment. It will not be ignored. God will judge you as to whether you were faithful to his word and the leadership of his people. He will judge you. In the final day of judgment, it's coming up. Your faithfulness, your commitment to the word of God, your commitment to the people of God. Sometimes we... We, we, get it, we get confused. We think that we can be committed to the word of God without being committed to his people. That's impossible. That's an impossibility. Glory to God. Amen. But God is going to judge us as to whether we were faithful to his people and to his word. This word faithfulness is synonymous with loyalty. It's synonymous with loyalty. And so you'll hear me talk a lot about loyalty, and that's because they are synonymous. They mean basically the same thing. Loyalty or faithfulness is unwavering in bad times, bad times, and times of suffering. When you are, when you are loyal to God's word, when you are loyal to God's word, you don't abandon it in a time, in, in, in a bad time, in a bad season. A bad season in your life or in the lives of others. You know, we have friends. And sometimes we just abandon our friends when they're going through. Amen. We don't, we don't consider them. Glory to God. We don't consider them when they're, when they're going through. Glory to God. Times of adversity. In times of adversity. Glory to God. A friend loveth at all times. This is Proverbs 17 chapter. Glory to God. Proverbs 17 and 17, that's easy to remember. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. You know what that did? Yeah, yeah, glory to God. I love, I love that verse. I love that verse because this is where, this is where the church let me down. This is, this is where I, I became so disappointed in the church. When I came into holiness, you know, I thought love was love. You know, the love of the love of Christ was the love of Christ, and I thought everybody walked in that, you know. But I found that people loved until adversity came. People loved until adversity came. And see, I never understood that. I never understood how we can just, you know, just abandon those we love in times of adversity. The scripture says here, a brother is born for adversity. Glory to God. If, 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 if I'm your brother or your sister, praise the Lord, 
then um, I've been fashioned to walk through adversity with you. I am made by God to handle adversity. And we, we as, as, as a, a church, as a people of God, we're going to have to grab hold of that because if we don't, we're going we're gonna to miss heaven. We're going to miss heaven. We're going, we're going to miss uh, that. We're going to miss that, that um, rapture. We're going to miss that uh, entrance into the kingdom, the millennial kingdom. We will not see God's face in peace because <clears throat> adversity in our own lives and adversity in the lives of others is nothing more than a trial. It's nothing more than a trial. Glory to God. And it comes to test our loyalty to the word of God and our loyalty to the people of God. Amen. Our loyalty to the people of God. Amen. So a brother is born for adversity. Glory to God. We were made to be what we are. We were made to, to suffer. We were made, we are fashioned to suffer. We're not like the world. The world, it despises suffering. And the things that the world go through, people, people don't dare, uh, you know, some people dare not to go through it, so they kill themselves. Amen. But we were born to adversity. We were fashioned, made to suffer, appointed to suffer. It's a part of our inheritance. Our Savior is a suffering servant. Hello? Praise the Lord. Are you working with me? Praise the Lord. This means that those who are loyal to Christ do not allow circumstances, situations, or even relationships with others to change their affections for righteousness. It do, we don't... When, when we are walking in the loyalty and the faithfulness to the word of God, we don't allow circumstances or situations or relationship with others to change, to change our affection for righteousness, to change our affection for righteousness. Glory to God. The birthing of the brethren in Christ includes adversity. Don't forget that. Every time a child of God is born, he's born for adversity and born into adversity. Come on. We were born into a hostile world. Isn't that right? And so God had to fashion his children to be able to handle adversity. And when you're walking after the spirit, when you're walking after the spirit, you can, you can handle adversity. But when you're walking after the flesh, you want to protect flesh from any adversity. Because when you're walking after the flesh, flesh has its own image. And it must protect its image. So especially the adversity that is in others' lives, we don't want to touch none of that. We don't want to be in, involved in any of that. Amen? Hello? We are appointed to suffer with him. Paul taught in Second Thessalonians, the first chapter, the fourth through the tenth verse, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith or faithfulness in all your persecutions. He said, we glory because we heard how you go through things. You go through persecution, trials, many afflictions. These Thessalonians were steadfast. And they had a reputation that went ahead of them, that they loved one another. And see, that's what faithfulness produces. It produces love. It's a manifestation of love. Are you hearing God? As I have attempted to explain many times in my writings to the church, Paul had a revelation of Christ in us. That was so profound. He had a revelation of Christ in us. And when you read Paul, you're reading his revelation of Christ in you. The hope of glory, which seemed to be much deeper and more detailed than any of the other disciples. In his writings to the Thessalonians, he's not timid in declaring the sons of God as suffering servants. Look in 2 Thessalonians 1 and 5. Pastor Sam, you want to read that for me? And I, I hope they put it up on the screen for, for our viewing audience. 
First Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, rather, 1, 5 through 10. Which is a manifest taken of the righteous... Token. Sorry. Which is a <laughs> manifest token of uh-huh. the righteous judgment of God, mm-hmm. that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. Wait a minute now. It's a manifest token. It's a manifest token. Look at this now. now uh, he's talking. He's, he's following that fourth verse. We glory in you and the churches of God for your patience and faith in your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. So your persecutions and your tribulations are manifest tokens of the righteous judgment of God. These are tokens of the, of the judgment of God that you might be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. Now, saints, what are we going to do with that? Are we going to uh, put brakes on suffering? We, we, are we going to put brakes on suffering because we don't like it, doesn't feel good? Hallelujah. But let me tell you something God said to us. He said he would never allow more to be placed on us than we can what? Bear. That's a comfort. And not only that, he gave us the comforter. That comforter is for trials. It's for, tri- for, for tribulation. That's why the Holy Ghost is called a comforter. Glory to God. It's, it's there. He is there to carry us through our trials and our tribulation. <clears throat> Without us losing our joy. Without us losing our joy. Come on, somebody. We can go through a trial. We can go through persecution. We can go through tribulation without losing our joy because we have a comforter. Come on, somebody. We have something the world doesn't have. We're not around here trying to commit suicide because of our troubles, the the trouble that's in our life. We have a comforter. Come on, we have a comforter. And he's saying now, these are tokens. These per- persecution and trials, even at, at, at uh, one point he was saying how the, the marks in his body, the, the, the stripes that, it, that was on his back, the, the wounds that he has suffered from beatings and whatnot, these were manifest tokens. These were tokens of his willingness to suffer for Christ's sake. Glory to God. And we're not, we're not, we're not being beaten we're not being um, tortured. We're not going through any of these things that these, these disciples went through. People just talk about us. Hello? People just, just talk about us. Hello? Or we don't get the promotion at the job that other people get. Amen. Because we're Christians or whatever the, the case is. But we're not going through what these guys went through. Glory to God. But when people talk about us, and, and you know what? We don't. People don't have to talk about us. They can just talk about one of our friends. And we don't want to have anything to do with that person anymore. While, while people are talking negative about them, we pull away from them. Oh, come on, somebody. Hello. I wonder, I used to wonder about that. How do we expect to help someone if we can't, we can't communicate with them when they're off? When, they, when they've fallen off the wagon... And they're they're going through, they're suffering, glory to God. And see, I've lived all of this stuff in the church, so I'm the the perfect person to preach about it. I've lived it. I've walked through it. I've I've lived it. I've lived in churches where where saints didn't care anything about other saints. They only cared about themselves. They only cared about themselves. They didn't care if you walk you were walking to church. Glory to God. I, I came to Jamaica and I see how, you know, we come here on Wednesday night and Friday night and some of these people, even Sunday morning, some, some of you catch, uh, you walk all the way from, from the, the halfway tree station up there um, t- to the church. But before you get to the station, you have already kept, caught a bus or a cab or whatever that brought you there. Glory to God. And then you walk down here to the church and it's hot. 100 degrees always in Jamaica. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. And, um, and some walk even further distances than that. Sometimes you don't have cab fare, bus fare, or whatever. 
and you're still walking. And I, I used to, I said, Lord, we just, in America, we just, hallelujah. We are spoiled. We're spoiled rotten. Glory to God. Um, because a lot of, a, a, oftentimes, you know, I was walking to the church. My car, I didn't have a car. Had three children. Had to get to church. Sunday morning, 90 degrees, and we had to walk. It had to be probably about five miles to the church. And the saints would know it, and they wouldn't stop and pick you up. They wouldn't come by to get you. They would know that you didn't have a car, that you couldn't get there. And, I, in fact, I would tell the bishop, and they would not, they weren't concerned about that. That was your problem. If you showed up at church, fine. If you didn't, fine. You know, the world keeps turning. Hallelujah. We we did not have all things common. We did not, you know, we just we just didn't. Praise you, Jesus. And so, um, God doesn't want us to be identified as such. We've got to be faithful to the Word of God. The Word of God t- teaches us how to love one another and be considerate of each other. Love is consideration. Hello? Love is consideration. When you love a person, you consider the, the, those people. Are you, are you working with me? You consider the people that you love and what they're going through and what their, their, their um, struggles are. Hello? Amen? And wherever you can help, you help. You help. If, if God make it possible for you to render some kind of aid, you do that. You do that. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to move move a little further here because we're going to come back. We're going to come, come we're going to be in, in this uh, particular chapter um, quite a while. So I want to go to, I want, I want to skip over here and I want to go to page 15. We're coming back to 13 and 14, 12, 13 and 14. But I want to set a precedence for what we're going to be discussing over the next couple of sessions next two or three sessions. Before we go any further with this discussion of loyalty and faithfulness, I want us to examine its application in the church among those who are brothers and sisters in the faith. I want to talk about a particular aspect of faithfulness to God's word because God put this on my heart and it's weighing heavily on my heart and the heart of God. God's heart is heavy because of this, because of these principles not being adhered to. The big question is, when is it righteous to withdraw? We're talking about loyalty here. Loyalty to the brethren. Loyalty to the members of the church. Loyalty in the body of Christ. So if we're talking about being loyal in the body of Christ, to, uh, and we're describing people as faithful brethren, that means that they were loyal to one another. Not only the word of God, but they were loyal to one another. So the, the question arises, though, when is it righteous to withdraw from a brother or a sister who may find themselves in a web of sin? When is it loyal, when is it righteous, rather, to withdraw and not be accused of being unfaithful. Are you with me? Does anybody ever wondered about that? When when, when is it righteous to just pull away from from someone uh, that is in the faith, may have been in the faith, but may find themselves in sin? That's what I want to talk about. They may find themselves in sin, and what is our response supposed to be to that? What kind of response are we supposed to have to a person that is in sin? Are we to be are we to remain loyal to them? Are you are you working with me? When I put this question before the Lord, the first thing he said to me is deal with the hypocrisy of my people first. I was sitting before the Lord and I, and I asked God this question. I said, God, you know, when is it righteous? Make it plain. He said, you deal with the hypocrisy of my people first. 
Now, if God said there's hypocrisy in the body of Christ, then guess what? There's hypocrisy in the body of Christ. Are you working with me? So, in order to deal with it, I'm going to tell you a story that I think illustrates the necessity of remaining faithful to the word of God. If we're going to walk as one, if, if this nation is going to look at at this church, uh, since I'm here in Jamaica, uh, in, at this particular church, I mean, our church is in Jamaica, if people are going to look upon us and see a difference, they've got to see our loyalty to the word of God. They've got to see our loyalty to one another, our love for one another, our faithfulness to one another, our faithfulness to God and his word. This story is called Jenny in the Church. I'm going to read it as I was inspired to write it. Sister Jenny was one of the very one was once a very skillful prostitute before her before her salvation. <clears throat> Those of you that are watching by way of television, I want you to listen to this very carefully because God wants to deal with a with a particular mindset. He wants to deal with a mindset here. Sister Jenny was once a very skillful prostitute before her salvation. She came into the church with great expectations of serving the Lord. She served as head of an auxiliary that had at least 20 people or 20 members on it. She was faithful to her responsibilities and uh, much loved by her peers. She was much greatly loved by the people that she served. However, after a while, she fell into diverse financial strain. Now, having been a prostitute, she was quite aware if a man was attracted to her. Do you know women know when a man is attracted to them? Hello. <laughs> Boy, it got so quiet in here. It's almost like the brother said, hush, don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. Don't say. <laughs> but women know, women, women know when, when men are attracted to them. Most women do. But especially a woman that, is, that was skillful at uh, servicing men, glory to God, she would know when, when a man is attracted to her. Therefore, she was able to have relationships with several of the brothers in the church, some of whom were married, but were very generous in giving to her financial needs. This continued for several years. Are you hearing God? However, the word of the Lord finally convicted Sister Jenny, and she desired to repent of her sins. Now, remember now, she's been in these relationships for several years, you know, because she, she needed money. But she got convicted, and she wanted to repent. Hallelujah. She wanted to repent of her sins, but never felt that God had forgiven her. Even though she stopped and asked God to forgive her and didn't do the sin anymore, she didn't feel forgiven even though she had ceased from doing such things. She felt condemned every time she came to church and had to look in the faces of those she had been with or to sit among the wives whom she had deceived. Can you imagine how she felt after she repented? Now, she might not have felt anything before she repented. But after she repented, she felt she really felt bad coming to church and having to sit among those, those women whose husbands that she had, you know, she, she had uh, slept with. She wanted to leave the church, but didn't know where to go to find such a word as she was receiving. Finally, she gained enough courage to go to the shepherd, Pastor Bob, for counsel. In that session, she confessed her sins and pleaded with the elder to help her to find peace in God again. 
Pastor Bob was moved with compassion and assured her that God had heard her cry and seen the disposition of her heart. Wonderful pastor. He insisted that she go forth in the knowledge that God had forgiven her. He said that peace would come into her heart when she allowed herself to believe that God could forgive her without ex exiling her from the flock. Now notice what Pastor Bob said to her. God can forgive you without putting you out to church. Hello? Come on. Remember, she was looking for peace. She wanted to know that God has forgiven her. Hmm? Hallelujah. In fact, he went on to say that she was that sheep that had gone astray whom the Lord went to find. But when he found the lamb, he brought it back and placed it among the rest of the sheep. You know that 99 and that one that went astray? When he went and found that one that was out there outside the pasture going on its own way, he found it, he brought it back and put it among the sheep. He didn't put it on the other side of the pasture and say, you can't sit among the sheep anymore. You can't graze among the sheep anymore. You got to, I got to isolate you now. Hello, like some churches do. Hello. Amen. Oh, God is getting quiet in here. <laughs> Pastor Bob individually, listen, Dan, this is his response. He individually rebuked the brothers. He went to each one of those brothers and he individually rebuked the brothers that had been involved with Jenny and dealt with each of them according to their spiritual response. Other than that, he never spoke to anyone else about the incident. He continued to pray for Jenny. Now, isn't that ideal? Isn't that the way it should be? Glory to God. He went to each one of those men, rebuked them, and he dealt with them according to their spiritual response. He dealt with them according to their spiritual response. There are times when you can go to a person, they know that they're wrong. You know that they're wrong. They know that they're wrong, but they don't have any remorse for that wrong. So you have to deal with them according to their response. Is that right? Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Pastor Bob's words were comforting and reassuring. Jenny was able to find peace, the peace of God again. Over the next few months, she began to fellowship with the Lord like never before. Can you imagine how she felt? She became more fervent in her work on the missionary board, which she headed up. So apparently he left her on the board. She was ahead of the missionary board. He didn't take her down. He left her there. Remember now, she came to Pastor Bob many, many months after she had already ceased to sin. This was months later, and she went to him because she felt condemned. She didn't know whether God had forgiven her, but she had ceased to sin several months before she ever went to Pastor Bob. Are you hearing God? Amen. His words were reassuring. She was able to find peace. Over the next few months, she began to fellowship with the Lord like never before. She became more fervent in her work on the missionary board, which she headed up. She instituted discipleship in the lives of the other workers. And it was evident, evident that they were moving spiritually in Christ. Now, if you are working with someone as a leader of an auxiliary board and that board is moving spiritually in Christ, then that means God is working with you. Hello? But if those people don't move spiritually, we got to wonder whether God is working with you or not. But God was working with Jenny because the people were moving spiritually. Nevertheless, someone brought it to the attention of the board that Jenny had been involved with several men in the church. Lo and behold, someone found it out. Miss Gossip, find it out. Hallelujah. And she brought it to the attention of the board. The board was outraged. All these spiritual people 
All these people that had, that Jenny had been working with, that would, that loved her so much. The board was outraged, especially since a couple of the women on the board had husbands that had been involved with her. Hmm. They weren't outraged with the husband. Something's wrong with that. They weren't, they weren't, they weren't, they weren't mad at him. They were mad at her, you know, which is another form, another hypocrisy there. Amen. The news traveled throughout the church and into the community. Hallelujah. When confronted, now, you know, they're going to confront her. Jenny confessed her sin to the board and the church because it's all over the church now. So she confessed it to the board and she confessed it to the church, begged their forgiveness, but refused to name those with whom she had been involved. She took the blame herself. She didn't put these other men names out there. Come on. Are you hearing God? She's, you know, I'm the one you're attacking, so let it, let it fall on me. I don't have to drag anybody else inside of this. See, sometimes when we go down, we want to pull everybody down with us. Hello, we're not taking this fall by ourselves. Because the first thing we do, we feel like, okay, I'm, you know, I did wrong, but he did just as wrong as I did. Glory to God. And so we want to make sure that that other person gets punished. If there's any punishment in it, if I'm going to be punished, I want to make sure you get punished too. So I'm going to tell them about you and you and you and you. Hello? Are y'all hearing God? Are you hearing God? I want you to see this because this is hypocrisy, saints. God's heart is heavy about this because this is how his people deal in the church. This is how God's people think. Glory to God. And this is evident. This is an evident token that they are not in the spirit. They do not love with the spirit of God. Amen. She was, she was determined not to expose these men whom she knew Pastor Bob had already dealt with. She knew Pastor, she was, she was spiritually mature. She knew Pastor Bob had already dealt with those men. So there was no need now to crucify them publicly. Hello? There was no need to crucify them publicly. You, and, and you may feel like, well, the men are getting away scot-free on here. No, this is a matured saint that says, okay, God has chosen to crucify me. I don't have to choose to crucify others. God is the one that chose for me to be crucified. I'm not the one to choose others for crucifixion. Come on, are you hearing God? No matter how bad they are. No, yes, they were, they, you know, I didn't twist their arms. They, they deceived their wives. They cheated on their wives. Hello? But, but if, 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 if God chose me to be publicly humiliated, then let it fall on me. If he wanted them to be publicly humiliated, he'll do that. I'm not going to do it. Now that's maturity. That's spiritual maturity. And that's love. That's love. That's love because remember, she didn't commit these sins alone. Are y'all hearing God? It's awful quiet in here. Therefore, neither the church nor the community ever knew the names of all the men with whom she had slept. But tempers ran high, and demands were made to the pastor of that church. Some wanted her missionary license re revoked, while others wanted her to be excommunicated. Boy, people quick. Every day was filled with unsavory remarks about the church and its practices. Some people resigned their membership after hearing about the incident. When it seemed that public opinion had become overwhelmingly negative, Pastor Bob conceded 
and revoked Jenny's missionary license and expelled her from the board. She was silenced and forbidden to do any form of ministry in that church. Jenny tried to submit to the judgment of the leader, though she could not understand why Pastor Bob had turned on her after having been so encouraging. Jenny felt the church had, had Jenny left the church and went into another ministry that supported her gift. And she went on to become God's champion for winning the souls of women on the streets. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Now, tell the truth and shame the devil. Some of you feel the same way those outraged saints felt. Need to get her out of here. Can't trust her anymore. She doesn't need to be in here. How many of you felt that way? Oh, you're not going to admit it now, right? Praise the Jesus. Okay. Amen. Beloved, the question here is, when one who sins against God and his people repents in his or her heart and ceases from sin, where is their place in the body? If God held my sin against me, there's no way I would be sitting here today. If God had really punished me for every time that I failed him, there's no way I would be preaching today. No way. And there's probably not a person in here that can say, that cannot say the same thing. Glory to God. If, God. if God had really punished us and forbidden us ministry, some of us wouldn't have a ministry today. Come on. If, 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 he, if, he, had, if he had followed this, the, the, the opinions of people, come on, are you hearing God? So where is a person's place in the body after they've sinned? After they have sinned and repented, notice the key word here is repented. I'm talking about real repentance. I'm not talking about lip service. I'm not talking about someone who just says they're sorry, but they keep sinning. Are you, are you hearing God? But if, if they say, if, they, if, if their heart turn and changes, glory to God, where is their place in the body then? It, is the general, it seems that the general consensus that whenever that wherever they were before, they are no longer to occupy that position regardless of their repentant heart. That's how the church deals with people. Regardless of, of their repentant heart, wherever they were ministering before, they are not worthy of that place again. I am so glad that God didn't take my ministry from me when I failed him. I am so glad. I am so glad that when I failed God, when I sinned against God, when I turned my back on God, that he did not take my gift. I remember repenting. I remember when I was repenting. I had repented of my sin, and I had ceased to sin because you haven't repented until you stop. Amen. And, uh, and I went to God, and I said, God, whatever you do, please don't take my gift. You know, just chastise me or whatever you have to do. You know, put something, let me suffer something or go through something. Whatever you have to do, but please don't take your spirit from me. Don't take the gift. Don't take ministry from me. And I just knew ministry was over. I just, I, God's never going to forgive me for this. You know, I'm not worthy of ministry anymore. Glory to God. Anybody ever been there? Yes. Glory to God. I'm not, I'm just not worthy of ministry anymore. Glory to God, and, and God's just going to take this from me. I am so glad he didn't. I am so glad he didn't. Glory to God. 
The Lord said to me, teach my people that they must be loyal to the truth. My word is truth. Therefore, it behooves us to look into the word of God to see what his instructions are in such cases. Galatians 6 and 1, what it says? Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault. If a man, a brother in the church is overtaken in a fault, what does it say? Ye which are spiritual, Uh restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, Uh considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Now, wait a minute. Does it say take him out of his position? Does it say put him at the back of the church? But the Bible said, Ye that are spiritual. See, everyone can't go and restore anyone. God doesn't send everyone to do this job. He sends spiritual people. You know, you, you know, spiritual people are not biased. Spiritual people consider that next week it could be me. Spiritual people. Spiritual people have compassion for those who fall from grace, those who who fall away from the truth. Spiritual people have compassion, love, and mercy. And so God says, send those those who are are spiritual and do what? Bring him back to his place in God. Remind him of who he is in God. Pull him out of the sin. Pull him out of it. Don't sit around and talk about him. Go get him. Go get him. Our saints, let me tell you something. <laughs> we were talking the other day uh, about the history of Bible teachers. They, they were telling me, starting over saying, we need to write a book. I remember... A pastor. I had to go to this house. I went, literally went to this house, went into this house, and went into a bedroom and got him out of the bed with a woman. When she saw me, she jumped up and ran. Glory to God. <laughs> I said, babe, you need to put on some clothes. She ran into the bathroom, stark naked. And I told him, I said, I'm going to turn my back while you get up and put on your pants and get out of here. He followed me out. And, I, and this, 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 this man was high. He was, he was high on crack cocaine. And when I got him outside, I, and I'm talking to this man. I said, what in the world? What, what are you doing? Because this man had a gift. He was gifted. And drugs was taking him down. Drugs and fornication was taking him out. And I just, I'm just talking to this man and just, you know, I'm just, I'm just reading him the riot act. And just, you know, reminding him of who God is and who he is in God and da-da-da-da. And I'm rebuking him, I'm rebuking him for, for his disposition. And all of a sudden, I got sober. Because I looked and look, I saw something in his eyes. And that thing in his eyes said, I'm going to, I'm about to knock you out, lady. <laughs> Glory to God. I looked at this man's eyes and I saw the devil. I saw the devil telling this man, knock her clean out. Glory to God. And, um, but I kept right on. I said, you're a lying wonder. Glory to God. I, I was talking to the devil then. I said, you're a lying wonder. And I continued to rebuke this brother and, sh- and, and, and try to make him see. Glory to God. And then all of a sudden I heard a voice behind me say, uh, Doc, was everything all right here? And I heard a voice on this side say, Mama, everything all right? <laughs> oh, that was okay then. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
But we took that brother. I took that brother. It was, it was like in the middle of the night. It was 3 o'clock in the morning. I took that brother to my home. I got Charlene and Annette up. I said, fix this man something to eat. We fixed him some food. Glory to God. Put him in, gave him a shower. Glory to God. And, and kept him out there for some days till we restored him. Restored him spiritually. And you all are my witness. I never took him out of his position, did I? He, he remained in his position. And this man, glory to God, today, right today, he appreciates the influence that he received at Bible Teachers. And he'll tell people, Bible teachers know how to love. See, see, I didn't read anything that says, take away his ministry. If he repents. And I had him out there with me for days. And this man, this, this brother just fell on his face and repented. And, and he, he's, he begged and pleaded and. You know, I'm sorry, I, 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 you know, you know, when you're on drugs, you just, when, you know, when you go back to smoking that stuff, you do whatever. And so we cleaned him up, we, we, we got the drugs out of his system, kept him out there, got the drugs out of his system, got him back sober. But we needed his ministry, we needed his part. I didn't read nothing that says, Take his part from him. I didn't read that. that. That's not in this verse. Hello? It said restore him and consider that next week or next month or next year, you could be the one that need restoration. Is that what it says? Amen. Glory to God. Why is not that enough? That's the question you have to ask. See, because we, uh, the church crucify it's fallen crucify it's fallen are you hearing God now I'm talking about the repentant because there's a difference there's a difference when a person repents and when one does not there's a big difference and the scripture tell you to deal with them differently hallelujah first Timothy 5 19 what does it say against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses, them that sin rebuke before all, that others also may fear. Okay, now, against an elder receive not an accusation. What is it? Accus accusation. Receive not an accusation. accusation. Okay, that's the American pronunciation. Okay. Accusation. 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 That's the way we pronounce it. Accusation. In other words, accusing people. Don't, don't re receive an accusation without it being um, witnessed or corroborated. By two or three witnesses. Don't even listen to it. And them that sin. Now, if it's proven that they sin, what does it say? Rebuke. Rebuke. Before all. Before who? All. All. So that others may what? Fear. Rebuke. Reprimand. Let the church know we're not going for that. We don't sanction that. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels. Paul said, I'm talking, I'm standing before God, Jesus, and the angels. That thou observe these things without preferring one before another. Doing nothing by partiality. It doesn't matter, glory to God, what their station was in the ministry. Rebuke him. 
so that others will fear. Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partake of another man's sins. Keep thyself pure. Paul was very strict in this. Let's look at Jesus' teaching on this. Matthew 18, 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, mm -hmm. go and tell him his fault. Now, if he trespassed against you, you who goes and tell him? Yeah. You go and tell him, all right? Between thee and him alone. It didn't say go tell anybody else about it. It didn't say publicize his fault. Come on. If, if he, he sins against you, you go and tell him. Or if you find out he sinned. That's what Pastor Bob did. He kept it between himself and the person that sinned. He didn't publicize it. Are you hearing God? <clears throat> mm -hmm. if he shall hear thee thou hast gained thy brother now watch this if he will hear you you've gained him that's what's important to God <clears throat> that's what's important to God see if, if, if you go and speak to him and he will submit to the council and repent of his evil, then you've gained him. You've taken him out of the snare of the enemy. That's what's important to God. Are we hearing God? That's what God wants. God is not in the... God, do you think... We're children of God. We, we, we all God's children. Do you think God is just waiting, sitting around waiting to... to, to cut us off and throw us into hell every time we commit some sin? God wants us restored. He doesn't want to destroy us. Why would he want to destroy his own children? So he said, those of you that are spiritual, go. And he says, if, if there's an infraction against you, go. If you hear about his sin against someone else, go. Keep it between you and him. Restore that person. Don't publicize it. Don't publicize it. We want it publicized. We want a billboard put up in neon lights. Mm -hmm. Then we want to punish. We want to tie them to a whipping post. And we want to whip them over and over again. Or we want to nail them to a cross and crucify them publicly. The church is the only entity that eats its own, turns on itself. We turn on ourselves. We devour one another. That's why, that's why, watch Jesus, watch this, read. But if he will not hear thee, if he won't hear you, then take with thee one or two more, mm -hmm. that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Mm -hmm. And if he shall neglect to hear them, now if he won't hear them, tell it unto the church. Now you can bring it to the church. But if now, he, you know, there are people I have had to deal with, I've had to deal with sin. In some, you know, some people that's in leadership position. I've had to deal with sin. And when some people find out later, maybe down the road, that I had to deal with sin, they mad because they didn't know. <laughs> they mad. Oh, you're trying to cover it up. You're, tr you're trying to cover. What does this word say? It said, the word said, don't bring it to the church unless he won't hear. Isn't that what it says? And when an elder sin, bring it before the council of elders and rebuke him before all the rest of them so that they'll fear. Hello. It tells us don't even bring these matters before the body of Christ because the man got influence in the body of Christ. 
people of glory to God, there are people that have been blessed. People that have that have that have been blessed by that person. I don't care how bad he is, if he's been in some type of leadership, he's got some influence. And there are people that don't know his sin that are looking up to him. Why do you want to destroy them? Take away their hope. So I, I've had to wear this for years, years. I've had to wear this, 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 this thing. This, I've been under attack. For years, so I know how, how Paul was feeling when he wrote this, I, and, and Jesus too. I've had to wear this for years. People say, well, Doc just trying to cover up. Doc just covered up that, and Doc just covered up that. Glory to God. Amen. I'm just doing what the scriptures say do. The scriptures say it ain't nobody else's business. Get it straight. Take it before the elders if you have to, but get it straight. But with, with spiritual people. With spiritual people. Let spiritual people deal with the fallen. Because people that are not spiritual are full of iniquity. And they're ready to crucify. They're ready to see some blood drawn. And they're not going to be happy until they see the blood. Hallelujah. That's, that's God's people. These are the people that say they belong to God. But that's not what the scriptures say. And so for years... I've, I've, I've tried to deal like the scripture. I was, I, I remember I was in a, I was in a, in a, in a, in a meeting. I was in a, I was sitting, sitting at, at a, oh Lord, sitting, sitting at a restaurant, sitting at Denny's restaurant. I'll never forget it. And th- this preacher was sitting in front of me and it was three bishops there, three bishops. And I was talking to, to one of the, this, this, one of these pastors. And I said, every year. You stick a knife in my back every year. And I take the knife out of my back. And I leave you in your position. And every year you rebel. Every year you try to turn the ministry against me. Every year. Every year. I've had to come to you and say, what, 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 what are you doing? And this was a major, major member of this, of this organization. And I said, I said, now, I'm sick of this. <laughs> I was sitting there and I went, I am sick of this. This the last year. I am tired of this. I was at, I was, and I, you know, I'm, I'm justifying this thing because I was, I was, um, I was in Atlanta and the Lord showed me what this person was doing and how the, this person was going, was gathering the brothers, the brothers and trying to turn the brothers against the ministry, against me personally. And so I went to Fort Lauderdale, but before I went to Fort Lauderdale, I called a meeting with the brothers. I said, y'all meet me over at at, at uh, Bishop Pryor, we're going to have a fish fry. Nobody but the brothers. Glory to God. Oh, Doc want to meet with us? Doc want to have a fish fry? Yeah, I sure do. <laughs> so, so, I, so I got to the fish fry, and I told each one of those brothers, I said, now this, this person came to your house. This is what God has shown me in the vision. I said, he came to your house. He been on, he burning up your telephone every day. He been to your business, your place of business. I said, and um, he's been subtly trying to turn. They were they're looking at one another, and they had and 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 they had to accept that God was revealing all this stuff. And then they be, they begin to see the character of this person. I said, now y'all can do what you want to do, because he 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 want to start him a church. So, I guess he's gathering you guys up to go to go with him. Praise the Lord! And they said, what? <laughs> so anyway, glory to God, we ate our fish. Amen. It was good too. Praise the Lord. And uh, and so I went to this brother and I told him. I said, let me tell you something. I said, it is it is impossible. 
When God puts someone in another person's heart, you can't take them out. I said, and those people that you're attacking, God has put me in their heart. Those brothers don't work for me. They work with me. And they don't feel like they work for me. That, that picture you're trying to paint doesn't exist. These are men. These are real men that make decisions that are, that are pouring into the ministry with their own worth. They have their own worth, their own values. And they, they, they counsel me. They give me, uh, what do you call it, advice. So that picture you're trying to paint and trying to color does not exist. And these brothers know it. And so, anyway, I said, uh, that's, you know, every year, for 20 years you've been doing this. Every year for 20 years. And so this night, I said, I am full. I'm up to here. No more. Find your way out of here. You want another church? Go start your church, brother. You need to start your church. Go, go. All speed, go. Start your church. And I'm going to love you till Jesus come. Bye. Oh, Pastor, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Pastor. Pastor, I'm sorry. Pastor, you know I ain't got nowhere to go. Pastor, I'm sorry. <laughs> so Mike was one of those other preachers that was sitting there, right? And Mike is nothing but a softy. Mike is very easy. Mike loved people. He really loved people. So these other bishops sitting there, they look around at me. I Don't look at me. And he, this guy just sitting there, he just, now, Pastor, you know, you, you know I need you. <laughs> I wanted to just smack him. Oh, I wanted to just reach across that table and smack him. I said, you've been putting this knife in my back every year, and this year I'm pulling it out, and I ain't letting you put it back in. But, Pastor. <laughs> so Mike said, um, I said, Mama, you got the right. You, you got the right. But, um, you know, the apostle I know got plenty of mercy. I said, don't you? I said, you just shut up. Don't just, don't you, just, just leave me alone. <laughs> Amen. Push, come to shove. Glory to God. Of course, I, I you know. I said, look, you better, don't, don't, don't do this no more. <laughs> don't do this no more. Praise the Lord. He said, Pastor, I ain't going to do it no more. Pastor, I ain't going to do it no more. <laughs> Pastor, I say, I ain't going to do it no, no more, Pastor. I ain't going to do it no more. I said, okay, all right. So we, <laughs> I said, well, let's go forward from here. So then we ordered our food and ate. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I was done with it. I'm done with it. You, you, you see? The Bible says restore. Ye that are spiritual, restore. It didn't say hold anything in your heart. It didn't say penalize him because he did it every year. It didn't say don't trust him no more. It didn't say take him out of his position. I left him right there. Did I? It, right there. Never took him out of position. Glory to God. Because he'd always fall. I'm sorry, Pastor. I'm sorry. God. Amen. So when you do what the words say, when you do what the words say, you'll always come out blessed. You always come out blessed. Now, notice what Jesus said, though, about the unrepentant. Notice what he said. He said, if he won't hear, if he won't listen to the elders when you call to him, glory to God, then it says, do what? Bring it to the church. Bring it to the church. Did, is that what it said? And if he shall neglect to hear them, mm -hmm. tell it unto the church. Tell what he did to the church because he won't hear counsel. 
He won't hear. There are some people that were in this ministry, glory to God, that sinned against God and God's people. And I did this this exact same thing here. I tried. I went to them personally. We went to them as as a leadership board, the board of bishops and elders, and they still would not hear. They would not hear. They would not, why not hear? And when this matter first came up, when it first came up, <laughs> instead of them just whatever, they created whole new scenarios that had absolutely nothing to do with what was going on. Just created just just a whole host of lies and and whatnot. A whole you know thing to to tell the people. Glory to God. But even at that, because there because all of the things. Let me show you something. Let me show you what love, true love is. Let me show you what true love does. There was there was some people that I had to deal with that had that had sinned against. God and and his people. And I went through all these steps. And I said, now look, let you need restoring. You need rebuilding. Let me and the other bishops rebuild you. Put yourself in this position. And 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 if you put yourself in this position, we will protect your ministry. It will be here. Your ministry will be intact. There's no better person to protect your ministry than me and Primus McGirt. Y'all know Primus. Primus is an awesome preacher. Glory to God. But Primus has an evangelistic ministry. And he and, and he is a troubleshooter. He is a discipler. And he's a church builder. And, and but he's not interested in just pastoring one church. And I'm definitely not interested in just pastoring a church. I pastor pastors. So I said, we will protect. We we will protect. And keep your ministry intact while you are being rebuilt. Strengthened. Strengthened in God. That's the way things are supposed to be. That's the way you're supposed to do things. And we're going to keep this right there. And so they said, no. Every offer we no, and and they because they said no. Now they create all these scenarios, all these things that are totally untrue, totally unrelated, and 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 then you know make me the villain. Now let me show you something. They, I, even though I was made a villain in that particular situation, glory to God. When it came to the church, I did not bring all that filth to the church. But I was attacked. Not only was I attacked, all, my whole bishopric was attacked. Glory to God. When I brought it, when, when we brought, we tried to bring to the church, we had to bring it before the church because they were no longer there. They were no longer at their, at their ministry. And so we had to give the church an explanation as to why they weren't at their ministry. But God told me, don't bring all this filth because people had been influenced. And you don't want to rob people of the hope. You know, they don't deserve that. People don't deserve that. You understand what I'm saying? People don't deserve that. And so we have to consider people. We have to consider love. We have to love people enough not to want to see them hurt. Do you understand that, saints? God is really, this thing is really heavy on God's heart because God keeps setting situations up to show us how the church thinks. That And and this, this is... An abomination before the Lord when we can't think like he thinks and we sit and we praise him and we glorify him in other situations. But when there's, when people are falling by the wayside, we don't know how to pick them up. And we don't have the courage to pick them up without penalty. Come on. We don't have the courage to pick them up without penalty. We want penalty, penalty, penalty. Throw them in prison. Do something. Beat them. Tie them up and beat them. Glory to God. But glory to God, the scripture don't tell us to do that. And you notice what this here says here? It says, if if they won't listen, notice what it says? Tell it to the church. 
And if they neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Don't deal with them anymore. That's what the scriptures say. If they won't, if they're not going to hear the counsel of God, then don't deal with them anymore. Some of you are stuck because you deal with people that God has rejected. Now, I just need to say that. I need to say that because God told me to say it. You can't move forward. You can't go any further. You're capped. You can only get so far, so far because when we when, see God has a methodology and we have to stick with that methodology. First of all, God said, don't bring that garbage to the church if the person repents. Didn't it say that? Now, if the person doesn't repent, repent and doesn't adhere to apostolic order, the scriptures say, turn them out like an infidel. Treat them like a heathen. Why? Why does God say that? Do you think, do you think, let me show you something. God has order. God has order. And you, and you, Pastor, Pastor George, you applaud God's apostolic order. Because, because of apostolic order, you are learning what you learn. The word is flowing down from God to the apostle and into you. There's a pipeline straight from heaven. We're getting the word, we're getting revelation, and it's coming straight to you. That's God's order, and he works inside of that. That's why you've received things that many others have not received. Because of apostolic order. Well, there is discipline in the church is also done by apostolic order. Amen. It's also done by apostolic order. And God is saying that when, when, when apostolic order is not adhered to, he says, turn them out. Treat them as a heathen man and a publican. Why does he say publican? Because the Jews didn't have anything to do with the publicans. He says, turn them out. Leave them alone. Don't deal with them anymore. Now, if you're receiving revelation because of apostolic order, then when it comes down to discipline, the discipline of the saints, and you break apostolic order, what do you think God's response to that is? What do you think God's response to that is? You see, God has a God has taken discipline and given it a balance. God says, if if my if if a man falls and he'll hear my word, if he'll hear my word, just restore him. You've gained a brother. Just restore him. You know, I forgive him, and if I've forgiven him, that should be enough for you. Is that right? So if God forgive a person, why you can't forgive them? And God can forgive a multitude of sin. Because we have, we've committed some sin, saints, since we've been saved. Come on, let's be real. Since we've been saved, we have disappointed, we have disappointed ourselves and others because of our own sin, our faults, our shortcomings, missing the mark many times. We have, some of you couldn't, your, your house has been in disarray because of your disposition. And God forgave you. You repented. You came to your altar. You say, God, it's me you're talking about today. I'm a mess. And God didn't penalize you. He let you get it straight. Is that right? So that's the, that's the same mind that he's saying to us. He's, he's got a balance here. He says, if a man will hear my word, then embrace him. Don't cast him aside. If he's loyal to the word of God, glory to God. There are times when, when I, I remember Mike, Mike testified of this, so I can testify. There, you know, I might have went to, gone to Mike and said, now, da-da-da-da-da, da-da-da-da-da, about something some time ago, years ago. And, and he'd be all up in his, nah, nah, nah. well, this is it, nah, nah, nah. 
and 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 um and you know might be two or three of us talking to him and he'd be nah, 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 nah. and I say da 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 a b c d e f g and Mike just not because he's afraid of mama because believe me Mike is not afraid of any anything walking he's 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 just not but he fears God and he'll tell you. I'm not going to buck against God now. He'll just humble right on down. The moment he hear God, he's going to buckle right on down. And that's, and that's what God is talking about. If a man fall or a woman fall, and they will hear God, and they will submit to God, then why that's not enough for us? That should be enough for us. Do you hear? We can't take on the disposition of these people. Let me show you. Let me show you what Jesus did when they when they brought the woman that was in adultery to Jesus. They brought this woman. They said she was caught in the very act. And and so now, all the church folk know it, and the whole town know it because the church folk got a parade through the town. Hello, the church folk got a then expose her now to all the heathens, bringing her through the town to the so they can stone her. And they bring her to Jesus. And Jesus said to that woman, well, he said to them, he said, y'all that don't have no sin, cast the first stone. So, no, of course, nobody couldn't throw any stones. So now, what, what is God trying to show us with that? Jesus was not fearful of public opinion. Come on, are you hearing? Jesus was not fearful of public opinion. He didn't care if the whole world knew. And see, the church is afraid of public opinion. You don't want the you don't want nobody talking about your church. You don't want nobody talking about your preachers. You don't want nobody talking about them. Glory to God. And of course we don't. We don't want negative publicity. Nobody wants negative publicity. But my loyalty must be to the word of God. My loyalty must be to the word of God. If the word tell me to do it a certain way, I got to do it that way regardless of the consequences. Are you all understanding? If you don't have loyalty to the word of God, you don't have anything. You don't have anything. And people, people, let me tell you something. When we won't do what the word say, people have no hope in the church. A young lady came to me and she was telling me, she said, I was in the church. I said, why, why are you not in the church now? She says, because I got pregnant. I said, you got pregnant. And you, she said, yes, and, and, and you go back to the church and, and they put you in the back row and, and they talk about you and this and that. You bring your little baby to the church and they talk about you and this and that. I said, well, you bring you and your baby to, to BT. Just bring you and the baby both come to BT. We don't do that. We better never do that. Amen. And so, because she says she used to teach Sunday school. She used to, you know, be very active in the church. And then she messed around and fell into a relationship and got pregnant. Glory to God. And, it, you know, and, and, and the church just, you know, treated her like a piece of garbage. Come on. Amen. That's not what the words say. That's not what the words say. I said, that's not what the words say. And God don't have no problem with no baby. God got a problem with sin. You don't want to penalize the baby. Hello? Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? There's a balance to this thing. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to warn you because God told me to give you this warning. People that will not hear apostolic order will not follow protocol, the protocol of God. You should not deal with and I'm telling you that because God says so. It doesn't matter what your little, your little, um, what do you call that thing? Uh, your little emotions and your attachments. If Bishop Lorna, you know Bishop Lorna and I are closer than sisters. I'm closer to Bishop Lorna than I am to, to anybody, any, you know. I'm just as close to her as I am to my sisters. 
And I love her with the love that I have for Bishop is, is so special. You know? But if she fall and will not hear, as much as I love her, I gotta leave alone. Because she has disregarded God. She has no respect for God's word. Do you understand what I'm saying? God told, isn't that what he told me to do? He said, treat her like a publican or a heathen, a heathen man. That means that you don't, he said, you don't keep company with Baal. You don't keep company with Baal. Do y'all understand? I want us to move forward. And we got to move forward by obeying, obeying God when it's bad. Things are bad, and it might be mama. It might be mama. It could be your mother. It could be your husband or your, you know, I know you got to, you know, you got to sleep with him. You got to stay in the same house with him. Glory to God. But you understand what I'm saying? It could be people that you love dearly, people that have influenced your lives. But if God has order, if he has order and those people refuse to walk inside of that order, if they refuse to submit or to repent, glory to God, to that order. Because you know what happens when people repent? There's reconciliation. There's reconciliation. When people really, truly repent, they want to reconcile. But when people don't repent, there's no reconciliation. There's never any reconciliation. Glory to God. And so if, if, we, if we're going to walk with God, we got to walk with him in the good. We got to walk with him in the bad. And he's a comforter in both. So sometimes it could be your best friend, but if they won't hear apostolic order, God say, detach yourself so you can move forward. If God detaches himself, because anyone that will not hear God's word, God say they're the bastard. Come on. He said, I don't claim that person. Why do you claim, claim them so much? Why are you claiming them? If God doesn't claim them, why are you claiming them? Are you hearing me? And if God forgives a person, why can't you? If, if, if forgiveness is all satisfactory to God, if that's the only thing that God, if, if God says, okay, I forgive this person, and that is the extent of his response, why isn't that not enough for us? Do you hear God? We've got to walk in righteousness, and that is righteousness, to forgive, to embrace, to restore, to love the way God say love, and to obey when, when there's disloyalty to the word of God, because that's all we got is the word of God. Man shall live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So we got to do what God say do. We got to love people the way God say love them. And we got to, and, and, and because we pull away from a person doesn't mean we don't love them. We're doing what God say do. We're doing what God say do. Because when a person really, really repents, they reconcile with God and man. They reconcile with God and man. But when they have never repented, they do not reconcile. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing God? You believe it? Yes. Clap your hands and tell him thank you, Lord. I want to say that um, God is an all-seeing God. He sees everything and everybody. There's a, um,
there's power in obedience to God. And it takes courage to obey God. It takes courage, Star. It takes courage. And saints, let me tell you something. I have been criticized for 30 years because I'm loyal to the Word of God. If, if I find in Scripture what I'm supposed to do, that's what I'm going to do. It doesn't matter who doesn't agree with it. I'm going to do that. People say, well, you put up with stuff for years and years and years. If a person asks me to forgive them, I forgive them. And it makes it easy. Because my forgiveness is real. I don't hold stuff against people. I don't hold stuff against people. And I don't touch anyone's anointing. I don't touch anyone's anointing. It's dangerous to put your hand on someone's anointing. I know how to pick people up. I know how to go and, and down in that septic tank that they've gotten themselves into, fallen into. And I, I'm not afraid. And this is where I want Bible teachers to go. I'm not afraid to roll up my sleeves and step in the septic tank with a brother or a sister to get them up out of there before they drown in their own mess. Mm-hmm. I'm not ashamed. I'm not worried about what's getting on me. Because if I go in there clean, I'm coming out clean. That stuff's not going to stick to me. And see, sometimes we're afraid. We're afraid to touch people. Sometimes we're even afraid to touch, touch sinners. People that want to be saved because they have a certain reputation. They're this or they're that. And so we, we don't, we don't want to get too close to them. And if you're not spiritual, you don't need to. But if you're spiritual, glory to God, you, you, you can't be a respecter of persons because you're going to meet people that are messy. That are gonna, they, and they're going to mess all over themselves. They're going to be very messy and very controversial. And, there's, and they're, and they're going to be prone to adversity. You got to know where your place is in that. Where's your place? Do what the scriptures say, and God will do the rest. If we do what the scriptures say, God will do the rest. You think God hate a person because they sin? He hate us? He doesn't hate us. He's trying to restore us. The only problem that God has with sin is when you won't repent of it. That's when he got a serious problem with sin. When you will not repent. When you move forward as if it's all right, glory to God, and that's going to be your lifestyle. That's going to be your lifestyle. You're going to come to church. You're going to go to church, glory to God, and you're going to sit and hear the word, and you're going to sing praises to the Lord and continue to sin. God got a problem with that. Now, he has a serious issue with that. You won't hear teaching. You won't hear counsel. You won't hear instruction. You see, I learned something. I learned how to go, and I've had 30 years of experience. I've actually 45 years of experience in this. I learned how to go, Pastor, to, to a person that is, that is in sin. I learned how to go and Get up under that person. But sometimes people can't even get themselves out of sin. They don't know how to get themselves out. And I and I, I have I have compassion on those people. Because it, very early in my walk with God, very early I fell into sin. And, and, and my emotions were caught in the sin. My emotions were caught. And I, and I was like, Lord, 
I know this is wrong. But my emotions were caught up. I was blessed because I, I, I went on a sabbatical. I went on a, a fast 14 days and nights. i never forget it, 14 days and nights. And I said, God, I'm not eating until you deliver me out of this. You got you to gotta deliver me out of this. And I came out of that hotel delivered. I said, if you deliver me this time, you don't have to worry about me doing this no more. I came out of there delivered. That man looked like the devil to me when I came out of there. He looked, he looked like he had horns. Amen. But there are things that we have done in our lives, saints, that we don't want to talk about to nobody. But God forgave us. He forgave us. And he want us to be just as loving and kind and generous with our mercy to other people. He want us to forgive others just as he forgave us. That's why we left in these bodies so that we can be touched with the infirmities of others. Amen. And if you had any other heart, you need to ask God to forgive you. If you've held sin against people, ask God to forgive you. Or if you won't hear counsel, when the elders come to you to counsel you and say, you know, come on, brother, or come on, sister, get out of this. You can get out of this. You don't have to do this. If you have not listened to that and you continue to sin, you need to repent. Just, just, just fall on your face before God and say, God, I'm sorry. I repent of this. I repent. I walk away from it. He, 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 he'll forgive you. Those of you that are watching my television, just repent. Just say, God, I'm sorry. I turn away from it today, right now. I know I've been counsel, but I didn't listen to counsel. But I turn away today. I turn away today. I've been listening to the word, listening to the word, but I didn't do what the word say do. I turn away today. I turn away today. And those of you that have not loved the way the scriptures say love, repent today. Repent. I've held things in my heart, held things in my heart. Tell the Lord. I've held things in my heart against my sister and my brother. Glory to God. I've held them up in my heart. Sometimes it's not even people that did things to you, things that you heard people did. Ask God to forgive you. If you need to come to the altar, come to the altar. And say, God, I just, I just, I just want you to be merciful to me. I haven't been merciful, but I want you to be merciful to me. And I will be merciful. I repent of my ways. I repent of my thoughts, the way I have thought. My thinking has not been right. My thinking has not been right. My ways have not been right. I have not forgiven like I should. Or I have not listened to you like I should. I have not obeyed like I should. Just come. Fall on your face before God and say, God, forgive me. I need your mercy today. I need your mercy today. It's just a good thing. It's a good thing to be able to come before God. Hallelujah. Because God has been good to us, saints. He's been good to us. Glory to God. We're moving forward in Bible teachers and amen. And we're going to worship God and our giving in just a moment. But before we do, before we do, glory to God, we have one of, one of our pastors here today. Glory to God. Pastor of our online church. 
You've been so faithful, very faithful. In fact, she bought us our first computer, the first computer this ministry ever had. She bought it for us. And have been so loyal. If, if there was a a, a person that, that de- depicts loyalty in this ministry, it would be her. Loyal and faithful. I want to introduce to you to greet us today and whatever remarks you want to make. Praise the Lord. Our own Pastor Star Groff. Praise Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. I wasn't expecting this. Good thing I listened. I was on my way to the restroom. (laughs) Anyway, it's just a blessing being here in Kingston, Jamaica. It was such a blessing to be at the conference again. I was there here last year. The Lord blessed me to be able to come again this year. And it's just always a blessing because, because the people of God here are always... You have such beautiful hearts, you know, and you really are servants. You know, you really know how to serve the saints, and and you just do it do it so freely and so willingly, and it's just a blessing. I feel like I feel like a, a queen when I come here. You know, when you go back to the states, you, you you're working, you're working. <laughs> but um, we wa- I watch you in the online church, most of the online uh, church watches you every Sunday I mean, uh, and every other uh, every other broadcast that you have during the week. The online church, which is made up of, 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 you know, so many hundreds and from so many different countries, you know, and we have me- online church members, we have uh, leaders, they are, they're in online church leadership every week, you know. Uh, we have discipleship going on for them uh, throughout the week, and these are people throughout the United States um, um, uh, London, um, uh, England.